Good evening, Zero K fans, and welcome to another exhibition match stream. This is Shadow Fury CC3, bringing you a series of exhibition matches. Starting off today with Yogstoth versus Kamar on Bandit Plains. Now, to many of you who watch my stream regularly, this looks familiar because it looks a lot like Trojan Hills. It is not Trojan Hills. It's considerably bigger and wetter, which actually makes spiders pretty much useless on this map, or at least a lot less useful. There's one thing I noticed about this map. Actually inspired a bit of iced coffee is the fact that you cannot get amphibious or spider units across here. Jumpers can go across these gaps, but that's it. This is the one way to stop spider units from moving around. Water combined with high... Well, okay, water in general. But combined with this terrain, it stops amphibious as well. Regardless, Kmar is going for light vehicles. Given the size of this map, this is a 16x16 16 16 map. It's compared to the 12x12 12 12 Trojan Hills, which is how we normally see of this map design. It's considerably more imposing. You know, Yogstoth going for Shieldbot Factory, which I'm not sure on this map given the size of it, but it's a thing that can be done. However, yeah, like I said, this is a 16x16 16 16 map with actually the same resource distribution as Trojan Hills, or just about. I believe there are some minor differences. This hilly area here does not have any direct analog to Trojan Hills, but by and large, this is pretty much the same map or extremely similar map design. Anyway, checking out the opening strategies. Yogg'Sathoth getting a few bandits early on, but not too focused on that. Focus instead on early expansion. Make sure to have a couple bandits around just in case for raiding. Darts are coming in from Kmar for raiding and double checking, so just want to make sure that nothing's going to happen. And similarly, Kmar keeping a Scorcher at home just to make sure that this bandit here and any potential bandits aren't going to stop his expansions. Both players are likely to take off most of their map. going to easily get 20 or so metal before they even start to encounter each other in any meaningful capacity. So I expect to see either Caretakers or possibly an air switch after this. In fact, I'm a bit surprised neither player did go for an air start on a map this large, but... There you go. Vehicle start makes a lot of sense. The shield bot start can work, but it's one of those things that's... more a matter of plotting into late game. As far as rating goes, Yogstad's gonna have a harder time than Kmar does, but... if he does... play it smart with his defenses, he could just build up a shield ball and walk through. Just roll through here and try to take out Kmar's forces. Vehicles can have a hard time dealing with large numbers of shields, though admittedly Scorchers tend to dive under shields, but yeah, Levelers and Ravagers are going to be taking range, and that's a bit harder to deal with. Not that hard, though. I mean, it used to be the case that vehicles are considered to be impossible to use against shields. I think nowadays that attitude has probably changed, but I guess we'll see how that works out. So Kmar, he's primarily focusing on construction. He has switched over actually to building up some levelers because why not? At this point, Bandit and Scorcher are meeting up, but not a big deal. This, Like I said, at this point, neither player really is in a great position to deal a lot of damage. Given the size of the map, you just can't get a force in that well. Rating is also that much harder, so really this game is going to have a lot of setup. Set up for probably about 10 minutes or so until players start to really meet up with large armies. Yogg'Sathoth still going for heavy bandits. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't switched over yet to... Not entirely surprised he hasn't switched to Thug Felon, but I'm a bit surprised he hasn't started to switch to it at least a bit. He's going for pure bandit. Definitely more focused on just having some quick response. Doesn't want to go for the shield ball yet. Not confident he can go for the shield ball yet from the looks of it. We'll see if he does actually go for that shield ball in the first place. And Yogg'Sathoth right now, he does know very little. He knows nothing about where Kmar is, and Kmar similarly knows nothing about where Yogg'Sathoth is. He's building another radar on the center of the map. That will let him see the center, but given the size of this map, it's really hard to make work. Now, we do have a Scorcher Bandit salt here, but Scorcher really just seeing that Yogg'Sathoth is trying to expand down southwest. At the same time, Kmar is starting to expand to the west as well, but primarily has been expanding to the north. Neither Yogg's has been kind of going for a dual direction expansion, but primarily been expanding south. Similarly with Kmar, he's primarily been expanding north, setting up a little bit to the west. I think I'm Newton, surprisingly enough. But yeah, setting up a little bit to the west. Not very much, though. And really, both players are just keeping out of each other's way out. Either out of coincidence, or just because they figure that they can't easily take on the other. For whatever reason, Kmar and Yogg'Sath are still just setting up, posturing a bit in the center of the map. Kmar looks like he wants to take out some of these frontal expansions here. Yogg'Sath does have a few bandits to defend, but these Scorchers should be enough to deal with them. Anyway, Yogg'Sath, I think he's going to move in. He is 
Is he going in for this fight? It looks like he is going for this fight. At the same time, he is starting to raid in the back as well, but that's not working too well with the Newton. But in the center of the map, that fight did not go well for the bandits. And Newton sending a bandit into the water, it's going to be stuck there for the rest of the game. Bandits cannot move in water. Which, that's where Newtons do come in handy. They do shoot units into the water. Or anywhere, really, but into the water is a common place. Scorch is kind of trying to come in to harass a bit, but not able to do so. Getting chased off by a Lotus, and that's really not going to do him any good. And at the same time, some bandits coming in. They will be intercepted by the Scorchers. That's not going to do him much good. Scorchers come in, and... That one bandit is not even going to have a chance. Not even going to get a shot off. It is going to be able to run away, though. Getting away with 8 health, but that's enough. If he gets repaired, then it won't be much of a waste. More bandits, however, have to defend against these Scorchers. Lotus is going to be coming in, and that's going to stop... That's going to stop the raid cold. Couple donations of Scorchers to Leogsdoth. I'm sure he appreciates that. Working nearby. However, Scorchers coming in the main base, and Kmart is... Well, with this, he's really starting to get aggressive. His main base, he is building up primarily Scorchers with a few levelers. He's been transitioning into mid to late game. And at this point, it looks like Thugs are being built for Yogstoth. He is able to get rid of Kmar's forces, but yeah. He's now started to transition into the mid late game, getting Thugs. We'll see about Felon pretty soon, but Yogs Kmar not actually going for this. Kmar does not know what to expect there. I don't think he knows what's there. I mean, there are enough Lotuses that would stop the Scorchers, but he I don't know if he knows that. However, level is coming in. This is going to be a problem for those Bandits. Not for the Thugs, mind you, but for the Bandits, definitely. Scorchers going to do what they can to try to deal with that. And at the same time, some bandits coming in to raid along the northeast side. Well, Scorchers come in along the west side to deal with these thugs. Not getting in close enough, though. It looks like Kmar wasn't pushing them down. At the same time, over to the east side of the map, Scorcher getting rid of this convict without any issue. The bandit that was harassing didn't even survive. But this attack to the west side becoming a light contain. Thugs will probably be able to get rid of it, no problem. But it looks like those bandits going the other way. Not even wanting to deal with it. Just avoiding that fight entirely, and so they should. And an Athena! Oh my! And I don't think I have ever seen an Athena in a casted game. I think this is the very first time I've ever seen an Athena. Yeah, this this unit here builds units. That's its big thing. It builds a bunch of other stuff. Well, okay, it builds caretakers. Builds units. That's what it does. Oh, come on. Lack of unit up. Aki. Okay. Yeah, it builds units from every factory. And Erector being built along the north side. I was surprised at that. Looks like he's going to be building a proxy factory right behind Yogstoth's base. Yogstoth is de defending a bit from these levelers. Well, from the Scorchers, the levelers are pushing that back. And Kmar actually has quite a lot of map control at the moment. And a massive economy, 60 metal coming in compared to Yogstoth's 40. Admittedly on this map, that's not saying a lot. I mean, there's, there's a ton of metal on this map. There's or rather, a ton of space in this map to just take the metal that's there and then build power around it to overcharge. I'm, okay, we do have... This metal extractor being overcharged a fair bit, and another pylon being built up. And Yogstoth is getting pylons around the map to get all of his energy around. Stardust not doing too well against Scorchers, and Yogstoth taking a lot of damage from these levelers. His whole base is, well, his whole front line of his base is getting damaged. Being cut in half, though, there is now no easy way for him to defend this section to the southwest. At the same time, though, he is going for an attack. It looks like more of a distraction raid than anything else, but he is going to be able to grab a couple Scorchers while his base goes down. But these bandits get rid of that Scorcher and move on to deal with more of these... Well, everything here, really. This entire hill is going down. The entire hillside is going to be destroyed by these bandits. Not much that Kmart can do about it. He does have... What is he building here? He is building a chainsaw, not building much else right now. I guess he's expecting an air switch, which Yogsoth is not going for. I don't know why he's expecting that air switch. That is not the question. However, Yogsoth being pushed out. Not a bad raid, though, by Yogsoth. Did manage to get rid of a lot of the power infrastructure from Kmart. And still dealing damage. All of these metal extractors are undefended. Don't even have power plants near them. Yogstots, on the other hand, do at least that buys them a bit of time. Though Kmart has not been raiding this. This has worked as, as a distraction from the looks of it. Kmart not focusing on what Yogstots is doing. Not focusing on defending him. Actually, what is Kmart focused on at the moment? Kmart is currently focused on... Okay, he's currently focused on this expansion right here. That is his primary focus. His cursor is all the way over here. He wants to... That's all he cares about building. Building that fusion, those fusion reactors, multi, plural, and not focusing on this expansion, so he's not really splitting his attention super well. And that means that enough time has been bought for this felon to be put out, and Yogstoth, does he have more felons in construction? Not yet, but he does have this one. And while Kmart now 
just now going back to deal with this. A lot of defenses have been built behind his forces, and they're not making it easy for him to get out. Did lose a couple scorchers that he didn't have to lose. He could have really gone to the south much sooner and dealt with that, but he never got around to it. And this is what happened. I mean, Yogg-Soth now trying to deal with this Newton here, and the Newton is... Well, actually not even under, not even done yet. Under construction. Sooner than that, the Felon Ball is pushing forward, while Yogg-Soth does have... Well, a bit to worry about here. His, this Felon Ball will take care of this, the forces over to the west, while the other one in the center just being used on defense. And bandits being used to raid around here. Yogg-Soth really taking down Camera's economy. He, there were no defenses in the way. There was just nothing stopping Yogg-Soth from doing all this. And Kmar had no units around the back to actually deal with this, and wasn't sending what units he had nearby to defend. It was rather unfortunate. Yogstoth is pretty much stopping anything coming through the center now, thanks to this Felon Ball. And another one to the Northwest, however, the Northwest one... It's getting... It's not really doing much. These levelers are going to be stopped by these thugs, but still, it's not doing too much. Center of the map, more Masons going down, while... These levelers are taking quite a bit of damage from the thugs. One Felon... One Felon range, second Felon is... Well, center of the map, there's no other felons, but these thugs, they're doing okay. I mean, they're doing fine. They All their shields are doing great. The levelers are dealing some splash damage, though. That's one thing. Leveler splash does give them a bit of an edge against thugs. The shields of thugs don't make a difference. More masons going down as well. Kmar cannot retake the center of the map. This entire reclaim field is now Yogg-Sothoth's. And Kmar back to his base, still focusing entirely on... Oh, focusing on Ravagers, levelers, and some Scorchers. Primarily Ravagers, while in the Northwest, he's getting a Behemoth just completed right on top of this base here. That Behemoth is unpowered. That's the only problem. Those fusion plants are not in range. You'll need to either build another fusion plant, or better yet, build a pylon. Get the pylon to power the Behemoth, because Behemoths require 50 power in the same grid in order to work. So unfortunately for him, that strategy being delayed very slightly, and it looks like Yogg-Sothoth... Is he aware of this? I'm sure he's got to be aware of this. No, he has no radar on this. He actually is not... He might be aware of this, but if it is, it's only by fluke. His radar does not catch it. Admittedly, it's on a really high hill, so it's hard to catch. And now the Behemoth getting out. And that's... Wow! Getting rid of almost all the caretakers in one blow. Nearly getting the factory as well. Yogg-Sothoth, does he have any backup factories? I don't think he does, but... That factory about to go down. No, never mind. The factory's not being targeted, but every all the support structures around it are being targeted pretty heavily. And now, I think, this... Oh, he just... He does not have the right target, that's the one problem. Does he have radar on this? He does have radar on this. He does have radar coverage, he knows that there's stuff there. But I don't think he knows which one of them is the factory, or at least... He should know which one of them is the factory. He's he scouted the area before. He should know which one's the factory, but he's not targeting it. He's just targeting this area here. Possibly radar and accuracy is causing that. Getting rid of a lot of the bandits, however... This is... This is gonna be quite some trouble for yogg -Sothoth. Difficult for his units to get out. Admittedly, a little bit late. So one thing, this strategy, well, not a bad idea, is too little too late because all these Felon Balls, the Thug Sport is right there too. I mean, Yogg-Soth's doing a great job keeping all of his Thugs right next to the Felon. Nine Thugs, all of them supporting the Felon directly. And this Behemoth, got in, Okay, that got rid of the Shield Bot Factory. Didn't expect that to happen, I apologize, I missed that completely. But, it doesn't matter that much. Yogg-Soth does have... Enough money. He is rebuilding in the southwest. He actually is getting... Wow. Morbus Command. I didn't even notice the commanders this entire time. On a map this large, commanders do not matter that much. So, there's no reason for me to really worry too much about that. However, a few thugs are getting damaged in the center of the map. Yogg-Soth... He's starting to get a bit of pressure. And this felon out in the open without shield regen. The thugs need to get near it. Are they going to save it? No, they do not save it in time. That felon goes down. And these thugs trying to do what they can. On par with the Ravagers. Although, unfortunately, the, their shield's being destroyed. That... Really is not doing them any favors. And the leveler is just nice as a trump card there. And the behemoth at this point has these areas of target still. I mean, the behemoth, it can still target this expansion and still keep Yogstoth somewhat suppressed. However, jump jet plant coming in here. And Yogstoth coming in with quite the upgraded commander. Beam laser concussion shot with a lot of speed and armor upgrades. However, his units. Okay, they're doing fine. A Support group of Felon Thugball coming in from south, from the north that did help out. However, this Felon's still out of position and not able to regenerate his shields quickly enough. Ravagers are quite good against Felons. I think these Felons are grading a small or a large number of really light units. Bandits, however, to the north are taking a lot of damage. And anyway, Felons grading as light units because they basically reduce the damage output of their opponents faster than they reduce their own defenses. 
But if that's not the case, then it doesn't really make a difference. And the thing is, with heavy units, the Felon basically just drains a lot of its defenses and does nothing until that unit is completely dead. But because it's such a heavy unit, it doesn't actually reduce the damage of that unit. No damage output changes occur in that time. The Yogg-Soth doing a nice bit of harassment on the south base, south expansion for Kamar. And Kamar has not really switched over to anything. He hasn't done any fact switching. He's actually lost a lot of map control thanks to, I mean, thanks to early harassment. And now yogg commander coming in here just taking everything out. I mean, level 4 commander, this is not something seen frequently. And on the other hand, I don't even know where Kamar's commander is at this point. I really don't. I'm actually feeling kind of silly about that, but it looks like... Oh, Kamar's commander's over here, and it's just a commander junior as well, so no big... No big deal, but Yogg's commander goes down to a bunch of Ravagers. That's why troll comms have a hard time... Okay, typically known as troll comms, but yeah, that's why highly upgraded commanders typically have a hard time. Didn't expect to have that happen, did catch it, just barely, but... She thought the commander would actually do a lot better. But yeah, Kamar's commander, not much to speak about. Yogg's commander is now dead. And Yogg's, however, does have a bunch of pyros coming. Oh, a bunch of. Yes, pyros are being built up. About half a dozen built up so far, and another dozen incoming. I don't know if I agree with the strategy, but it might just work. Start a support with pyros coming in. One pyro coming in here against the Ravagers, just trying to damage them all very slightly. Ravagers being. Kind of medium weight units are not the most vulnerable to this. Still kind of useful, but not the most useful it could be. And the Behemoth is still dealing what damage it can. I mean, Kamar has basically ripped out everything that existed in this north. Shield Buff Factory, however, does exist to help Yogg-Soth along, keep him in the game. A couple Roaches as well, just defending that. And they might actually come in handy fairly soon. Felon Ball in here, however, Dominatrix is turning the Felon against his former allies. Unfortunately, the Dulce... Wait... Okay, so apparently shield, the shields do not transfer between enemy shields, which kind of makes sense. But yeah, the felon goes down, unfortunately, for Yogg's That was pretty big. The thugs try to do what they can, but really not much. The levelers, with the splash damage the levelers have, that's really putting a major thorn in Yogg's side. I think he has more coming in. He has more bandits coming in, but not more thugs, just more bandits. These rem last remaining thugs are about to go down, and the bandits, well, more thugs coming in for support, but... Definitely a win for Kamar. However, Pyro's coming in here to burn up all these Ravagers, and it looks like they'll be successful in... Well, partially successful in doing so. Dominatrix here, however, that is giving Kamar a major advantage. I mean, that basically won this fight for Kamar, because it got rid of the Felon. However, Roach is coming in. These Roaches are going to be... That's going to be a thing to worry about, and they are... All three of them go at the same time. Actually, not that great of a thing to have happen, honestly. You don't want three felons, or three roaches to just explode simultaneously, and did that just cause is that water? No, it can't be water. It's too hot to be water. The weird decal setup. Anyway, there are these bandits doing what they can against the Ravagers while more pyros come around to raid the no southeast side. I think Kamar at this point I'm a bit surprised he's not, okay, there we go. I was about to say, he's a bit not going for a gunship or air switch by this northwest side, and he is. However, Yogg-Sothoth is starting to push around. He's starting to basically just, well, keep the center. Kamar's trying to push in, but Yogg-Sothoth doing what he can. The problem is this Dominatrix. The solution is probably these bandits, honestly. These bandits get past the Ravagers, get to the Dominatrix. They will be able to kill it. But now they go for the former ally thug. Yogg-Sothoth cannot be paying attention to this. I do not believe he is. No, he is paying attention further north. He is not focused on this at possible. No, he is focused on it. Killing off his former ally thug. I'm not sure why he's doing that. That really doesn't make much sense. He's, he should be killing the Dominatrix. But no, unfortunately, those bandits, while they could have destroyed the Dominatrix, did not actually do so. And a crow is incoming by Kamar, but that will take about four and a half minutes. That won't be done for a long time. Especially since Kamar did lose a lot of his economy early on. His economy advantage he had before, the 60 metal and counting, yeah, long since gone. Another roach goes off, gets rid of a couple of units, but not much. Damage is more than kills, really. And another Roach is set up for defense. I I think it's going to go off with this level. This leveler is coming in in a great position to get that Roach to go off. As soon as the Ro that leveler attacks, that Roach is not in position to go off. That was kind of lucky, actually, for the bandits. Very, very minorly. It wasn't that lucky, honestly, but it was a little bit lucky. Just barely. I mean, 
Those bandits died anyway, but at least the roach didn't... Yeah, didn't really matter that much. Yogstoth, however, getting another... What? Okay, getting a second shield bot factory. Interesting. Oh, I see. Because, yeah, Ravager's coming in from the north. That is going to be a problem. And the crow is almost done there. And Ravagers are going to tear apart the shield bot factory. The second shield bot factory as a spare, not a terrible idea, but still kind of problematic. Pro the Pyros, however, that's the only thing that really Yogstoth has going for him is the fact that he does have this hidden jump bot factory. Or not hidden, but this out of the way jump bot factory. The Ravagers aren't directly going for it. Actually, the shield bot factory does survive. Caretaker is supporting it. Not so much, but the shield bot factory itself. Are, were the caretakers supporting it? it? Looks like there weren't. Oops. But yeah. Shield Factory is still alive, gets defended, but more Ravagers coming around the side, so I can see why Yogg'Soth is building that. Definitely good reason to do so. However, Yogg'Soth, more harassment along the northeast side of the map, and Kamar's not got much to deal with that. Kamar's focused entirely on this fort... This is kind of fortified position by the factory here. And at the same time, more power is coming in. Newtons are being a bane. I mean, they're really... Kamar, how many Newtons has this guy built? Built 11 Newtons around the map. I have... You barely see one in a game, but 11 Newtons in a 1v1. And down goes a Shieldbot Factory, too. That's... That's gone. There's no more of that. But yet... Seriously? That's a lot of Newtons. Admittedly, they are quite powerful, unless you have artillery. But... Really? Given especially that the Jumpbot Factory does have... Okay, the Firewalker isn't probably going to be considered great, but it is still artillery. I mean, the Shieldbot Factory has Felon, I guess, for range. Racketeer for stopping stuff. But the Firewalker just destroys everything. And down goes that Dominatrix, finally getting rid of it, bringing back a Pyro, and... At this point, though, Kamar has ta retaken the center pretty well. I think Yogg's looks like he's going to probably try to surround that, but at this point, given that Kamar has completely taken the Northwest as well, Yogg's doesn't have any surrounds. In fact, Kamar has him pretty well surrounded. This entire north area is entirely Kmars. This crow, I mean, this crow is a safe investment just because of the fact that there's nothing that really can attack the north. The only problem with that is it is draining metal from the factory here. Not a huge amount, but it is still taking some metal from that factory that could be getting more units faster. And Yogstoth is managing to stay in the game partly as a result of the few number of units that are being built from that factory. That being said, I'm pretty sure the gunship plant... Well, how much is this... And it looks like a grand total of about 12 metal is being poured into that crow, so it's not the worst thing in the world. However, more pyros just tearing about those ravagers. Like I said, Kmar does not have as many units as he could theoretically have. With the amount of resources he has and the amount of caretakers he has pushing into that particular factory, some levelers are going to try to deal with the north or the southwest expansion, the pyro, or the jump jet factory, the pyros being built out of there. Going to try to deal with that. The Stardust is the only limitation there. And the, the Defenders won't be the biggest deal. Levelers will be able to take care of those, no problem. But the Stardust might be a problem. And it looks like Pyro's now going to deal with more Newtons, but still, this is a bad spot for a Newton. Several Newtons nearby each other by a choke point is a great spot. It pushes them back. And like I said, the Stardust being a major pain, that is not allowing those Levelers to get anywhere near that factory. That Stardust is really... That's earning its keep. Everything else is not doing so great. But the Stardust... That makes it all worth it. And like I said, Kamar is really... Okay, now Kamar is really starting to run out of army here. This factory is not on priority. This crow still has another... Apparently two minutes from being done. Looks like mostly due to lack of economy. The northeast was raided out. Pretty heavily damaged. Not completely destroyed, but heavily damaged. And this crow here... 90% done, but apparently it's going to be another two minutes before it's complete. And at this point, Yogstoth has the army. Kamar does not. Kamar has the resources to turn into an army, but it's not working out too well. And Yogg'Soth, having the center of the map, he's got a ton of economy at this point. All of his convicts are just reclaiming everything. This entire reclaim field belongs to him. That is... That is huge. And Yogg'Soth is taking full advantage of this. Bunch of caretakers pushing the Shieldblood Factory. He is getting another Felon Ball. That Felon Ball is going to be the one to close out the game. <sighs> Unless, of course, this Crow actually comes up in a reasonable amount of time. 10 seconds. Actually, the crow is just about to come up. Five seconds left for that crow, and Battle is joining the center. Pyro's trying to just keep Kmar in his base, but that crow has been completed. Needs to be used as efficiently as possible. Not sure where he's going to use it. Possibly trying to get, to get rid of the factories here. This felon is the only felon in the game right now. 
If that... If this crow gets rid of this felon before it's... No, it's not going to be able to get rid of the felon before it's built. The felon has been built. And thugs will be following very shortly after. Pyro's setting themselves up to harass, but... Oh, not just setting themselves up. They are moving into harass. They will get rid of all these workers before the Newton is done. The crow coming in here. I don't think that Kmart... No, Kmart is not aware of this. Just now getting line of sight. And the felon will start fighting against this. Running out of shields pretty quickly, though. And... Not going to help out. The Stardust, however, is doing what it can, but this crow has a ton of health. That's kind of the whole point. Does see the factory, and it's going to go for it. It's going to degun it. It should degun it. There it goes. Bombing out the entire factory area, getting rid of the factory, getting rid of this fusion plant, getting rid of everything that was building up shield bots. The Felon, however, is still alive. A Felon Ball is not coming, though. Thanks to that attack. Now, if he gets rid of the jump bot factory, it could work out, but Archangels are underway, and he's focusing... A little bit too much on that. He is going south, however. Gonna run into a bunch of defenders, and I think that Yogg-Soth going in for... No, I think that... Clearly, Yogg-Soth is going for a counterattack. Roach is coming in to try to counterattack. The Crow able to just deal with what he can, however. It is at half health. This is going to be a bit tricky, but I think if he does ruin this, he still has to deal with the Pyros. That's the thing. There's a lot of Pyros. I mean, there's these five Pyros here. There's these seven Py or six Pyros here. And the Archangel... No! The Crow moving away from the Archangels, not trying to bum out the Jump Bot Factory, and that's... I think that's going to just do it for I, The Archangels have too much range. It should have just gone for it. He's out of health to deal with it. And look, okay, he is going for it. Not sure if he's going to try to bomb out the Archangels. That wouldn't be the best. He is going to bomb out the Archangels. Not the best idea. It is going to reduce the damage being dealt to him, but he really should have just gone in just a suicide attack. And that Crow is going down. That Crow is down, and Kmart did not win the game with it. I don't know what how much hope Kmart really has. Getting some Black Dons as well. But with the Archangels being built... Actually, the Archangels being stopped. Alright, well, Yogstoth is giving Kmart a bit of an opening, but at the same time, Yogstoth moving in with Pyros! And they are just gonna burn everything up, one of them being launched off the map, which is rather unfortunate for it, but... So, this is what I mean by Newtons. That's a good placement for Newtons. Where they can shoot units off the side of the map and have them fall... have them die in oblivion. That's... That's what they need to be used for. And a Roach Bomb goes off, Gets rid of a mason. A bit of a waste for the felon nearby, but... I don't get rid of the mason nonetheless. Does reduce that minefield, though. I mean, that mason died, but it operated as a bit of a minesweeper. Black Dawn coming in to follow up, and that Black Dawn should have a bit of a chance. But I don't know how much, really. The right angle, and it could work, but the pyros alone would probably get rid of it. I don't think... One Black Dawn cannot kill a factory on its own with his D-gun. Or not D-gun, sorry. It's his main attack. But it cannot kill with its main attack. Felon goes down, however, and Yogstoth does have Stinger in the center, does have a few thugs in the center, mostly has Pyros in the center. His army's primarily been the Pyros. I mean, if he hadn't lost the Pyros here to that cleverly placed Newtons, or these cleverly placed Newtons, probably would have torn apart the entire base, but those Newtons saved the day. And Kmart coming with the Black Dawn, exposing it way too soon! Yogstoth's gonna be switching over to Arc. No, he's not even gonna switch over to Archangels, he doesn't have to. Not against the Black Dawn, he has enough, and... Gonna try to get rid of this Geothermal Power Plant. Well, one shot gets rid of it. I mean, that certainly does the trick. So as far as periphery raiding goes, Kmart is doing a pretty good job. Getting rid of all the stuff that Yogstoth had around the side, but not really getting rid of the stuff that actually is getting Yogstoth or keeping Yogstoth in the game. That does, however, stop Yogstoth from building quickly. Getting a fusion plan to try to get back in the game. It's going to be another minute and a half before that's done. However, the army advantage that Kmart has is still pretty notable. Sorry. That Yogstoth has, still pretty notable. Kmart does not have an army advantage. He is focusing most of his economy. No, he's focusing more into Black Dons again. He's building quite a few Black Dons, actually. While also building vehicles. 4 to 3 metal, he is getting an economic advantage. And far more energy than anything that Yogstoth has. He's probably got a hundred or so energy. Could find out if I. Oh, not you. Ow. Oh. Ah, forget it. Okay, whatever. Doesn't matter. Anyway, enough energy. Kmart has enough energy. That's the important thing. Energy well in reserve. And getting, like I said, actually starting to retake the center a bit. These Black Tons doing a pretty decent job. But Archangels are being built. Or rather, have been built. They were built for the Crow and will continue to be useful against these Black Dons. However, now would be a great time. I don't think Kmart's aware of this. It's one thing. Kmart's not aware that now is the perfect time to attack the Jump Jet. The Jump Jet Factory here is completely vulnerable. Now is the perfect time to attack. Not going for however, going 
Instead, for periphery harassment, not a bad idea. Periphery harassment's never a poor idea. However, so is Yogstoth. Getting rid of Kmar's expansion here. Some of these, well, one Lotus does do the trick, but for one of the Pyros, sorry, one Pyro does die. The Lotus do the trick for one Pyro. The Black Dons are going to get rid of the remaining Pyros. And Wolverine setting themselves up to just stop any further Pyros from coming in trivially. And the Black Dawn's able to get rid of these Pyro... No, not even able to get rid of them. Has to have to retreat. Being set on fire by the Pyros. Like I said, Pyros do not do a bad job against Black Dawns. I think with gunships is that they are pretty vulnerable to pretty much anything that can shoot ranged attacks. Pyros being no exception. And these Black Dawns have put off their fires, but they are still pretty vulnerable. Wolverine setting up quite the minefield, so I don't imagine that is going to want to harass... I don't think he's going to attack directly this way anyway. It's probably going to go from the north given the way he's going, and Black Dawn just double checking here. However, now, it, like I said, is the perfect timing. If he goes around and deals with the base, that's... That might work out. The Pyros are in a good position, though. They are in position, and what? Oh, Kmar getting distracted by a Metal Extractor. He is not aware of this at all. Does not have the radar, doesn't have any sort of scouting going on. Not at all aware of what's going on. He is, re he is retreating with the Black Dawns, not a bad idea. And setting up more Black Dawns. And down go more of Yogstoth's Metal Extractor. So Yogstoth does have his economy reduced pretty heavily. And another, yet another Shieldbot Factor. This is the third Shieldbot, no, fourth Shieldbot Factor that Yogstoth has built. Including his plop. But the Jump Jet Factory, that is what is doing him all the favors this game. All of them. Kmart does have his Black Dons being built up. One of them, this one's waiting for repairs. Now getting repairs. Bunch of Black Dons will be coming in, but it looks like Pyros are once again in position. This Black Don over to the southwest is probably the best where it is. It really shouldn't move. Get Black Dons, get support, or no, don't move back. The Archangels are right in their way. They're gonna, there is no way that Black Dons are gonna get past those Archangels. There just is no way that's gonna happen. It's actually, no, never mind, not both of them. And it goes to the attack, tries to kill them, but Archangels are just too individually tough to get rid of that trivially. So unfortunately that Black Dawn did not get the opportunity, and as a result, is not able to get in. The Wolverines look like they're trying to inch forward, actually. Yet it appears that the mines are being inched forward somewhat. And at the same time over, Pyro's coming in here, getting torn apart by the Behemoths. Not before they're able to get rid of a lot of the metal extractors and power infrastructure that was over in the south. Or sorry, in the north, in the south of this Behemoth. Not the south. Relatively it's south. South of something. South of the north side. It's not the absolute north, therefore it is south. But it is... Like I said, Yogstoth's game at this point. It has been for a while. Just all these pyros. The Black Dawn's doing what they can, but... Nothing has really been a decisive blow. Getting rid of the pyros, getting rid of the jump jet factory, getting rid of the fusion plant. Those would all be good things to do right now, but... Kmar's not had a chance to really do any of them. That's kind of unfortunate, but anyway... Kmar getting yet another big piece of artillery. My goodness, how long does this game last for? Getting yet another piece of artillery to try to take map control. Yogstoth not going in for the kill because really the Newtons are being too big of a pain and he hasn't opted for Firewalkers. Oh, there we go. Right as I say that, speak of the devil, there it is. Firewalkers are being built. Yogstoth apparently wanted to go for the kill. Big Bertha has been built. Yogstoth fully aware of it. Not entirely sure how, but it would appear he's fully aware of it. Or, never mind. No, that's one of the specs that's saying that. So, this really isn't... Well, actually... Black Dawn's trying to do it again. They are getting rid of... Well, three Black Dawn's in a row. Getting rid of these convicts, not too badly. And need to get rid of the Razor. However, the Archangels coming from the south are going to get rid of these Black Dawn's if they're not careful. Black Dawn's are forced to retreat. And one of the Stardust's... They tried to get rid of it. No, one of the Black Dons is going to go down. It just needs to retreat. One of the Black Dons does go down. And another one taking heavy damage. That's that's nine. No, it's 360 metal being donated to Yogg-Sothoth. Really doesn't help doing harassment if that's going to happen. Some levelers trying to take, retake the center of the map, as has been the contentious part of the map for this entire game. I mean, yogg can't easily deal with the north side of the map. But he can't easily deal with the main base, really. Like, I mean, artillery, like Firewalkers, which... About three minutes until that's done, so it's going to be a little while. Apparently, more focused on building up shields, which, no surprise, getting another Felon Ball up. This Felon Orb, not part of a ball, and 
If those Black Dawns spot it, it's gonna die. The Black Dawns, however, are staying at home, a little bit afraid to move out from the looks of it. Or at least, Kmart hasn't paid attention to them yet. Kmart... Four minutes away from this Big Bertha. Well, okay, it's actually an infinite amount of time away from the Big Bertha, because it's never gonna be done. These Pyros here... That's it. These Pyros are gonna get rid of the Big Bertha, and the Levelers are gonna try to do what they can. However, there's way too many Pyros for that to be... ...at all possible. And even then, going up the hill like this... Surprisingly enough, it's working out with the Pyros to fight uphill, jumping over the Levelers, and... ...cutting in the center of their lines. The Big Bertha goes down, and those Levelers... ...didn't even matter. Kamar was not paying enough attention to them. They were lined up. Only a few of them could even get close enough for the Pyros to attack the Pyros in the first place. Didn't matter for anything else. And that Big Bertha's gone down. Kamar lost one of his other investments. These Black Dons, why are they not? Okay, seriously, what's going on with the Black Dons here? They should be being used at some point. And Firewalker being used as a Minesweeper does reveal its existence, though. That is the one thing, and... He is going to get rid of the Mines, though. That That is good. Able to get rid of these Mines, opening the path, admittedly opening the path that's on fire, meaning that his units can't really actually get through it. The Pyros sort of could. They wouldn't be burned to death, but they wouldn't catch fire, but they still take damage, I'm pretty sure. However, this does clear it out for a good period of time. The Wolverines, however, still pushing in more and more mines, but this isn't a terribly large amount of mines. However, the Firewalker, the problem is it needs to be attacking the Newtons. This is where it has to attack. It has to attack here. It has to get rid of these Newtons, any of them, really. As long as it breaks a path in the Newtons, any other units can go through and deal with it. But that is not the case, and Kamar still doing pretty well for himself, not building any more Black Dons, and is, in fact, moving the Black Dons along the east side of the map, basically through his territory. At this point, Yogstoth, well, Yogstoth and Kamar have kind of split the map between themselves, though Kamar taking the north side pretty well, but the northeast side, that's softly Kamar. Kamar can take it whenever he wants. If Yogstoth tries, it's going to be difficult for him to hold it. Not impossible, mind you, but difficult. Firewalker, however, managing to inch forward enough to get rid of one of the Wolverines, and the other Wolverine should probably go down pretty quickly. Once the reload time is done, it's, well, possibly going to go down. No, never mind, not even targeting it. Yogstoth is aware of the Wolverine, but hasn't yet changed his target to that. I'm wondering when he's going to do so. He's not focused on this at all. He is instead focused on these bandits, trying to get rid of the levelers here. That's what he wants to do. And at the same time, the Felon Ball is going to encounter the levelers, and it's not going to work out well for it. Moving into the protection of the thugs. Unfortunately, the levelers, like I said, do a really good job against thugs, thanks to the splash damage. Not good enough, though. The levelers have to retreat. Not enough of them in play to get rid of this felon ball. But enough of them in the back, actually. Well, that's a lot of levelers. How many levelers are there right now? 18 right here. And looks like there's 36 total on the map. They are not bunched up, though. They are not together. These felon balls work really well against units that are not either, like I said, they work well against large numbers of small units, but they also work pretty decently against small numbers of uh, one or two moderately sized units. Against large units, they suck. But against a couple of moderately sized units, they do okay. If the army is split, in general, fighting a split army is a good thing. Our Black Dawn level of support. Kamar looks like he's ready to break out of this. This would appear to be the last battle coming in here. The Firewalker is... Well, where's the Firewalker? No matter, though. Black Dawn coming in here. Gonna get rid of that felon. The thugs can't do anything against the Black Dawns. They cannot hit the Black Dawns if they're moving. The levelers pushing in, just lining up for the attack. Haven't quite moved into the attack yet. The Black Dawns just softening up everything that Yogstoth has. And Yogstoth, I don't... I can't imagine that... He would let the Firewalker die, I would think. Well, not trivially, anyway. Seriously, where'd the Firewalker go? Being annoying. I don't know why I can't find the Firewalker. Well, at any rate, I don't see any Firewalkers anywhere. <sighs> well, that's beside the point. The point is, Levelers are coming in here. This is going to be the battle that will decide the game. Pyros are getting in a good position, though. The Pyros have a great position on the Levelers. Moving inside them, however, that's not going to work out too well. The Levelers are able to take out the Pyros halfway through the jump. Felon Ball taking out more and more of the Levelers, but the Levelers regroup. And have a nice circle around the felon. They will be able to tear it apart. Kmart needs to regroup his levelers. 21 right nearby. If you can get rid of this felon ball, that is... That's going to be pretty major. Right now, there is some extra production going from Yogstoth. He is pushing in a lot more. Getting 
another Firewalker? Possibly just the Firewalker you had before. I might have just missed it inside their giant blob of stuff. But these levelers, Kmart needs to move these levelers in. He needs to actively move them in. He is sending in Black Dawn, but that Black Dawn's going to go down. He's going to soften up the shield slightly, but it goes down. The other Black Dawn's also taking a lot of damage. These levelers now finally moving in. Not encircling as well as they could be, though. That's the one problem. And the Black Dawn's all go down. The levelers are going to be taking a fair amount of damage before they get in. This is why encirclement matters. And no, Kmart, why are you retreating, Kmart? You could take this. With this many levels, 21 levelers, he could probably take this. Admittedly, he lost all his Black Dawn's in the process, which is unfortunate. And sending in... Oh, even better. Sending in Halberds. How did I, how did I miss the Hovercraft switch? What? Oh, never mind. No Hovercraft switch. Just Athenas. More Athenas being built. And Leveler's doing a nice job here. No, Halberds. Okay, the Halberds got rid of the Felon. That's good. Now the Levelers need... Now the Levelers need to move... This is the thing. I've noticed Kmart... He's... He has pretty good decision making and a really keen sense of strategy. But his multitasking... His attention to all the different parts of the stuff going on in the map, that is not working out too well. Many times he's been doing stuff where he could have timed it really well. They timed attack very nicely, and it would have won in the game, or at least gotten him farther ahead. And that was one of those times. Admittedly, he should be, still be able to pull this out, but he could have had a much easier time had he attacked while the Halberds were distracting the Felon. That would have worked out wonderfully. However, these levelers still are going to win the fight. It's still going to be, looks like, probably a win for Kmart. He is moving towards the south, and that Firewalker stopping it, but it doesn't matter. Yogstoth throws in the towel. Not even a GG, just a surrender. And that is a very long game. Like I said, Bandit Plains is a very long game map. It is a big map. And thus, produces games like that. Anyway, going to go on to another match. A much, much shorter match. Which is going to be between. Let's see who it is. It's going to be between Randy and Lowry. So stay tuned for that.